Hello guys, Winston here. Ever since my first day with the Shape Oko, I was always content to believe that the use of homing switches was a bit of a dark art, best left for brave souls who weren't afraid to touch forbidden gerbil settings, and CNC gurus who knew some sort of advanced fixture in Kung Fu. But the truth is, like most things CNC, much less daunting than you'd imagine, at least once you take the requisite time to understand what's going on. Recently, I was contacted by Andrew Deal, a Shapeoko community member with far more experience in aluminum than I, and the proud proprietor of a small online shop called Additive Aerospace that sells 3D printed accessories for numerous nerdy endeavors. One of his projects is a homing and limit switch kit for the Shapeoko 3, which he provided to me for this video. So now, I had no excuse not to explore the dark art of homing, and my experience was less painful and more educational than I would have expected. Here's how my adventure in homing went down. Upon receipt of my delivery from Andrew, my first order of business was to check out the print quality of the parts. If you've followed me for any length of time, let's say since Maker Faire last year, you probably know that I'm more than happy to poke fun at plastic FDM printers. In reality, the only 3D printed materials I tend to take seriously are resin, metal, and soft serve ice cream. So it was with great skepticism that I accepted this package. I'm happy to report that the build quality of these parts is actually very good. Andrew said it was printed on a commercial grade machine and it shows. The consistency of the fill and smoothness of the layering is top-notch. Most impressive was actually the Shapeoko motor controller enclosure which Andrew also sent me. Maintaining this level of uniformity on such a large print requires pretty good equipment. For reference, my opinions on what constitutes a quality FDM print comes from projects I've personally made on a Dimension BST printer. This example was supposed to be a precision screwdriver set holder, and it delaminated halfway through the print process despite being in a heated chamber. So with that quality check out of the way, the installation process was next, and it's a pretty dummy-proof process. With the homing and limit switch kit, you get a pair of switches in the x-axis, a pair for the y-axis, and a limit switch for positive z. Each of these is labeled clearly on the printed brackets. You get all the hardware you need to mount them, and the connectors are color-coded and fitted to a strip of female headers for easy interfacing with the carbide motion board. The free ends of the connectors are attached in striped and solid pairs. It doesn't matter which side is ground because Gerbil only cares about circuit continuity when the switch is depressed. In total, installation takes about half an hour and even less if you're not setting up a camera. The hardest part is actually starting the screws in the mounting holes. So now that I had the switches mounted, the last step was to confront my Gerbil fears. There are only three settings in Gerbil you need to change from stock in order to make this setup work. Parameters 20, 21, and 22, which correspond to soft limits, hard limits, and homing cycle. Once you enable these, you'll unlock the full potential afforded by your switches. For those of you who are wondering what the differences are between soft limits and hard limits, soft limits are software imposed. When your linear travel exceeds a certain threshold, Gerbil stops program execution in a controlled manner. This linear travel is calculated based on distance from your home zero. Hard limits are tripped when your machine physically runs to the end of its travel as detected by your switches. In this case, Gerbil immediately kills power to the stepper motors, shuts down the spindle if applicable, and enters an alarm state. There's no recovery possible without rehoming the machine because you'll likely have skipped steps with your motors. These are both distinct from homing. You can home without setting up limits, but you can't use limits in Gerbil without homing. You only need three switches for homing and soft limits, and you'll need five for hard limits. Now one feature I haven't talked about yet is probing, which this kit makes pretty easy. On the negative Y switch bracket, Andrew included a pair of banana plug connectors that you can plug alligator clips into. One side goes to the spindle, or whatever you're probing with, the other side goes to a conductive piece in your work area. When the two complete a circuit, your CNC will come to an immediate stop. This is useful for zeroing out your Z-axis if you're machining aluminum, but by using a metal shim of a known thickness, you can also use it to find the zero point on any non-conductive sheet of stock. But you're not limited to probing in the Z-axis. You can also use it in the X and Y axes. Ever since I set up my Shape Oko with a machine-leveled work surface, I'd been planning to also measure the offset of the X and Y axis guides I'd machined into it. I bought a pair of 1, 2, 3 blocks. These are often used as machinist references. By dropping off one of these in the corner of my work area and then probing the faces of the block, I was able to determine exactly where my work origin was relative to my Shape Oko's absolute 0, 0 point. Then, I wrote a short macro in Universal G-Code Sender that would home my machine and then move the spindle over to this origin. So now, if I ever need to do a tool change or flip over a part, I'll be able to restart exactly where I want to even if I turn off the machine. In addition, I get the peace of mind that if I screw up a program, I won't crash my Shape Oko. This is why homing and limit switches are awesome. For those of you who want to try setting up limit switches, but don't want to be bothered sourcing all the parts yourself and figuring out how to install them, it may be worth considering a kit. Andrew Deal's kit, which I showed in this video, is a solid option. 
There are also two other noteworthy kits, one sold by Carbide3D directly, and one sold by Shapeoko community member Tim Foreman. They each have their pros and cons, and I'll leave you to form your own opinions about them. I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I'll be back in a couple weeks with another chapter in my modest CNC adventures.